Say baby. Hey, hello. How are you doing? Come here, Hi baby. there, Dave. How are you? I'm very good. Just to show it as real families. She's gone to bed now. This is Maya, my gorgeous. Hello, daughter. beautiful. How are you? Welcome you to the toilet paper diaries. <laughs> She's just disappearing. Obviously, our greatest fan decided halfway through, I've had, it, I've had enough and I'm about to leave. Mwah. You have to go to bed right now. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't be up in the morning. Love you, bye. Goodness me. There you go. One day she'll be a star, but right now she's not allowed to be. This is our show for now. Okay. Um, how are you, Ernesto? It's a weekend. You get a chance yeah. to chill out and not press so many buttons with your fingers. Is oh, that a good I thing? know, I know. I know. Well, I, I, um, I enjoy also doing these uh, disruptor clinics because I think uh, it's the only time that we have to actually uh, answer questions. And uh, we have some really good questions from, uh, from people from all over the place. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's always very, very interesting to see some of the stuff that uh, people are are asking. I am uh, actually very uh, impressed. We are right now in episode 44, 44 wow. days in a row. Uh, we have uh, days in quarantine, 49. We have to change that to 49 so that we can... Have it correct. So 49 days in quarantine. So tomorrow we're 50 days. <laughs> That's incredible. But every single day we've produced something that we started the show. We've not missed a beat. Um, for us, it's all about making sure that we're there as everyone's companion. And it's interesting to see, we're talking earlier about the fact that there's a real challenge for, for the world's celebrities because the world's been hungry for celebrities to, to look at and say, wow, this is how things should be. One day I want to aspire to be like these guys. And uh, without a movie or without a TV show or without a new album coming out or a book or something special, what you've got is rich people in their houses, in their pajamas, going, oh, dear, how can I deal with this? Or I'm really depressed because I can't go out and be famous. And so a real leveler for everybody to have to go back to grand zero in the same way as for everybody meeting your, your family and spending so much time with them nonstop every day can be a challenge in many cases reading about people who just met before the lockdown who decided let's, let's spend the lockdown together only expecting it to be an experiment for about one or two weeks and now it's gone on to always being a marriage in many cases it will turn out to be like that so i think it's going to be an incredible reset button on many cases including the way that we view celebrities because if you spent this much time staring at your own belly button looking at your own life and deciding, I don't know what I really want, but when I come out of this, I'm going to make sure I get it. You won't be so driven by everybody else and the, the whole media machine that drives you to love all the big stars. You'd be more interested in what's in it for you. And I think that's something that the big stars are going to have to realize. And it's something that we've been talking about. The influencers for a long time need to be more focused on what they actually bring to the table and who their people are, rather than just look at me, I'm really shiny. So I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a shake. I think it's uh, you know everything was in a house of cards, and then suddenly there was a big shake, and everything went down. And uh, there's uh, very few people which are going to come on top of this, uh, just because of course they are not really understanding what is going on. So I've been really taking this um, metaphor that you talk about of the uh, Wi-Fi code very seriously and very deeply and really I, I am right now trying to completely switch on to what uh, what the the uh, market is uh, uh, or the market just or not the market but everybody how they are feeling right now and that's why um, starting on Monday and this is an important thing starting from Monday we are starting our new series which is called, is called Renaissance and uh, what we're going to be covering throughout the week is going to be how the new world is going to be, because I think it's a rebirth. I think it's a rebirth from every single thing that, um, that uh, it's going, I mean, from every single thing. It's a rebirth. <laughs> so that's what it's going to be yeah. uh, all about. We have a lot of great content uh, to share with you. A lot of the things that we've always held to be true and obvious may not well be the same thing right now i never thought i'd spend so much time in the house without with my phone everywhere i go i bring my phone i didn't really do it that much before when i came to my house again i didn't want it with me but it does change the way that you just want to make sure that you are aware of what's going on outside but at the same time i do enjoy 
what's around me with my family and my friends and the work I'm doing more than the outside world. The phone is literally the only way to contact the outside world. It's not like you walk out and bump into people anymore. So yeah. I think a lot of the things that we've taken to be just, to, I mean, even a laptop, a laptop, a small box that opens up with a little screen, that might change completely. It might yeah. be you've got a massive interest in home projectors, just so when you do have that conversation with people, it takes up a whole wall. I mean, I don't know if you can yeah. see behind me, just over on, on this side here, I've got my projector, which you've seen before, but showing movies. Um, it, it, it just creates a different relationship with people when you enhance that and you don't just put it into a tiny little screen like we got on our phone. So yeah. I'd love to see what our questions um, from many people are going to be about. Um, and Renaissance is going to tap into a lot of stuff for next week. I hope it really um, excites people as much as it's excited us as well. Yeah. Well, yesterday I had the opportunity of uh, I, I was in three shows. I finished I finished the toilet paper diaries, and then I went to prepare to unmask with uh, uh, Pete Garcia, and then I was invited to I don't remember what the other show is uh, with uh, Chantel Simone, and uh, it was interesting because yesterday, you know, I mean, I they asked they were asking me uh, several questions. And this is what is different to what we're going to do right now. I mean, I was there, the the, the uh, guests, and, they, and people were asking me questions. And uh, I had the chance to actually um, answer a few of them. And then they were saying, well, what is in your eyes the most important recommendation that you can give as uh, we are right now as uh, marketers, as speakers, as uh, entrepreneurs? And I said to them, the most important thing is that you need to treat you need to treat your phone as a way of creation and not consumption, as we mentioned also yesterday on the on the show. And everybody was like, "Wow!" I mean, that's the biggest revelation I have really heard, and it's it's a, it's just really absolutely true. So yesterday, while getting together all the information for uh, Renaissance. I was, uh, I mean, I sent you a, lot, a, a number of videos also while uh, it was, you were sleeping, but I mean, I was, it was late for me. I was, uh, I was just looking for, for stuff. And then I, I started, now I see the world in a different world, in a different world completely. I mean, pre before I used to see something, I used to laugh. Right now I see it and I said, well, you know, this is content that we can use for the show. This is content that we can repurpose. This is content that we can learn from. And I am just looking at this information and I am already creating uh, right away. So I think, uh, for me, for everybody which is uh, which is watching this show, one of the things that we definitely rec recommend is that you use your devices to create and not to consume. More than anything, to create. Sure, you can use them to consume, but more than anything, remember, create, 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 create. Yeah, but here's a challenge for you, Ernesto. It's something that we've been very aware of for a long time. Not everybody believes that they have the ability to speak in public. Nine out of ten people have a massive fear of doing that. So when you turn around and say, right, I want you to create some videos and I want you to create some content that people can consume, that's like going to a different planet. That's like saying, right, I want you to learn to fly. And so I don't think that most people will do it, despite the fact we say it. Yes, okay, so we'd expect the speakers, we'd expect the people who are um, in the position of sharing content with people anyway to step up and start doing more actively stuff from their phone. But I think that the majority of people, um, they like it to be sent to them. They like it to be shared with them, and they don't really know how to be able to move forward. So when we start doing fast forward, we might even do it, as part of the toilet paper diaries, we should be sharing ideally ways of creating content that's gonna be relevant to people, things that people would want to be interested in finding out about. Because when we start going into this incredible retainer and gig economy, which we aren't quite in yet, we're still in a world where we think um, people are paying attention to us because they've known us before, so therefore are gonna work with us. I think we've never, ever, ever been in a position where you're looking at a freelance team working for your company from all around the world. That's where it's going to have to be. But you're going to find those people. So literally 1% of people who are prominent online will get most of the, the attention when people start looking at recruitment. Otherwise, we're just going to go to the, the likes of monster.com and so on to try and do a normal recruitment drive. But instead of having a couple of thousand or a couple of hundred thousand, you can be talking about a couple of hundred million people. So the odds of you getting selected like that are tiny 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 so you really have to start considering what's my brand what's my niche what's the areas where i can help people and how can i get people to believe that i'm the best person to start working with i don't think many people are ready to start putting themselves out like that 
They just hide in the background and hope they've been noticed. That's why they stick with the jobs that don't enjoy because it pays the bills. The boss, the boss might be a bit of a, a monster, but you know, it could be worse. Well, it will, it will get worse. I've already seen that so many companies now have decided that the model they're using right now is super cheap, super effective. Why go back to spending all that money on real estate afterwards? So yeah. when that happens, why do they need you? Why not just get somebody from China or somebody from, from a different country who's got the same qualifications, turns up on time, does their job and goes, and they'll never meet. They never have to do anything with them. That's, yeah. the, that's the, chat, the, the, the characteristics of staff from now on. You've, you and I have been in that world for 10 years. We've had staff yeah. from all around the world who have never, ever socialized with. But that's what people are going to start becoming. Well, that's exactly why we are calling our next series Renaissance. Because, yep. I mean, honestly, I don't care if they uh, people are telling me, well, you know, I am not ready to be doing videos. I am not ready to be uh, doing this and that. The truth is you're going to have to start doing it because it's the only way that you will be seen. That's what people, I mean, it's not like what happened when we actually got into this. So it's just absolutely critical. You want to be seen, you need to be there. I mean, right, we're, right now we're getting some... Uh, interesting uh, comments from Frank Mulcahy saying, well, the more we create, the more we go our, our no, uh, uh, knowledge base. Uh, we're getting some comments here from Pete saying that 2020 is a year of the Renaissance. And yes, absolutely. I mean, we have to completely think in a different way. And that's exactly what this series is going to be about. Anyway, let's just get started with the questions, because believe it or not, we have gone now 13, 13 minutes and we haven't really gotten into <laughs> any of the questions. Oh my God. Chatter boxes. <laughs> All right, I'll take the first one. Santosh from Mumbai. Uh, hello, Santosh asks, do you think we're coming out too soon? I get the feeling that politicians, politics and money are winning over the idea of preserving people's lives. Do you get that feeling too? Um, do you want to take that one first, Ernesto? Sure. Hi, Santosh. How are you? Thank you for your question. Uh, are we coming out too soon? Um, I... I want to tell you, and once again, this is this is just uh, this is completely need to be a apolitical answer. And you're saying I get the feelings that politics and money are winning over the people's lives. Now, I'm going to give you my point of view. It's my opinion only, but I think there is a, a reason why we're actually being released uh, a little bit too early, at least here in the United States. And. Uh, I think people are actually being released uh, a little bit earlier because, of course, that means that uh, there's going to be less complaints about uh, unemployment and absolutely there's political reasons and there's other things behind. Um, yeah, I mean, in, it, it really depends on where you are. I mean, I, I am completely unaware on how things are in India. I mean, I am following more than anything uh, I am following uh, uh, countries like the Netherlands. I am country. I am following countries like uh, the UK. I'm, I'm following countries like uh, England, and of course here in the United States. And yeah, it's very interesting to see how things are uh, being done. In my eyes, I believe that uh, it is not a matter of uh, uh, releasing whatever. I mean, I think it's just going to be now going to the to the uh, individual itself and uh, to the person which is i mean if you're working in a company and your your boss tells you well now you have to come that that's another story but i mean in my case as an entrepreneur they might say i mean they in fact i mean we just uh, we just read in the local newspaper that the uh, shopping mall is open and now the restaurants are open 25 uh, 20, uh, just so that you can feel them 25 percent uh etc etc but i think right now i don't feel comfortable with going in, in in going out it's just it's just my my way of thinking of I'm not going to be if I if I if I, if I was already here for 49 days. I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense for me to go out right now. So that's that's my uh, point of view, Dave. Yeah, I feel the same way about it. I feel that it has been driven, um, literally, like the, the idea of a toilet paper shortage was. As soon as you say there's no toilet paper, everybody runs out and buys toilet paper. As soon as the politicians say we're opening up because we don't want to end up look with, a, with being an economic dunce and financially well behind the rest of the world. The rest of the world goes, we're going to do it as well. Um, some countries haven't. Some countries have said, no, we're sticking it out for lots of different reasons. I think the big challenge here is, are you testing it? 
Are you checking to see whether people are safe or not? You need to have so many available tests, drive-through tests. Hospitals are ready to take on. You've got to know that you've got over that curve and you've got the hospitals ready to take on uh, a second wave if they need to. If those things aren't in place, I think that's a real challenge for anybody to start saying, we're fine, we'll go over it. And I think it's a horrible way of looking at people. I think what it comes down to, and this really hit me while walking the dogs this morning, is we have a price of a human life. Now, yeah. we probably always have, if you're a politician, you take a look at a war, you decide if it's worth it, what's going to cost, and can we win it, or how many people are going to... And so the politicians and statisticians that they work with will constantly be looking at all those different factors. But this is the first time it's been in our actual domain where you can work out from the figures. If you go back to work and you know that you've lost 50,000 people but you know that the money that comes in could be this and your industries over a period of time can get back faster, you're going to lose another 10,000 people. But that means that every time every person was worth about $10,000 to get them back into work, but it was worth it because it, our economy got better. You can price up what people think of people's lives. And yeah. for me, that's a really scary thing. I'll tell you what really hits me, and it's going back to the Hollywood movie. Do you remember the amount of Hollywood movies where somebody – that have soldiers going into battle. The one that reminds me of this more than anything is We Were, how was it called? We Were Legends or something. So it's a Mel Gibson movie where he's going into battle. It's, it's the first um, fight of Viet Vietnam War, I believe, or Korean War. So they won't leave any corpse behind. Somebody who's been killed in battle, they'll go back into battle to pick up the corpse, to bring it back of a helicopter, to get it home to their families, which always seemed bizarre to me from my own personal beliefs of gone the gone. But for that, You've got a certain price that they will say to get the person back home. What we've got now is a price that's being made just to get the economy up and running. And why is that? Ultimately, so they can win the election back in again. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Otherwise, they say it's somebody else's problem. I'm off. Bye. So yeah. that's, I think, what kind of comes down to. Um, but I also know that if the whole world steps up, the whole world comes back, and we also have – now the ability to understand social distancing everybody's wearing masks people know that you're gonna wear rubber gloves you know that you you are you value certain things more than you did before and you don't waste so much money i think we can get through it because we're all more aware it's not like before as long as people don't do stupid stuff and, and take the masks off and and just go party like they did before as long as we keep some kind of um decorum over the way that we relate to each other I think that difficult squeezing period will actually bottom out and we'll be able to do it. But it is a calculation I'm glad I'm not the person having to make. Yeah, I, I'm getting here a message uh, from Gotham Ganglani there in Mumbai. And he's saying uh, that uh, it is announced today that 33% of the workforce are allowed back to work in India starting tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday. So that's, uh, that's an interesting, uh, interesting yeah. development, Gotham. Thank you. Uh, Pete Garcia is telling us, just read that U.S. White House administration is producing Mexican government to reopen their factories because Americans need their products fast. Mexican workers unions are saying it is too soon and many have died and continue to get sick in the factories from, uh, from COVID-19. So on Monday, thank you, Gotham, Monday. Uh, Glenn Moore showers. Nice hey, you. Hello, Glenn, how are you? Great to see you. Uh, Fran Mulcahy say, if you if you have no economy, you have total disruption of the supply chain, food, medicine, then you have more complete chaos and uh, it will cause even a greater toll. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Frank, you're, you're completely right. I was just watching and actually I just have it here. It's a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, report. I mean, it's, I, I, it's, it's called the Great Depression of 2020. And they are basically explaining how the um, uh, how's going to be the domino effect, and uh, it is pretty much in order in order for us to avoid that uh, domino effect. There's a number of things that need to be uh, put into into uh, perspective, and that's why I mean I'm very excited about uh, uh, the content of Renaissance because it requires a lot of awareness. I mean, right now. I agree. I mean, having everything through halt. And once again, you know, I am not saying don't start the economy. We have to start doing things differently. And there needs to be a lot of awareness. So it's uh, it's very, very, uh, very interesting how things are 
uh, actually developing. Okay, so... I wonder, uh, I wonder what would happen, just one quick one before we move on to the next question. I wonder what would happen if somebody took the government to court because they lost a loved one because the decision was made. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but that, that would be something that, that would have to be debated from a moral point of view as much as anything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, uh, you know, it's it's really interesting. One of the things that um, uh, they were asking me yesterday when I was in uh, in Chantal's show, one of the people asked me, uh, I mean, how are you actually getting all the content that you're that you're because I was talking about you know sharing positive content and I was talking about uh, some good news, the show, so some good news, and if you know if if all we're doing is focusing on the negative. We're going to only see negative things. I mean, uh, as uh, we both know, the reticular activating system takes us towards whatever we tell them to, whatever we tell them, tell them to in. talk. The important thing is we have to start looking for positive ways and how we can get this done and uh, uh, try to find all the good that could be of all this situation. And there's a lot of very, very good things. So that's why it's really super important that you, you know, you, you filter all the information that you're actually getting on your. Uh, on your head. Anyway, let's move to the next question. This is Angus from uh, Melbourne, and he's asking, I work for a bank. We have many, we have made the decision to continue working from home because of the savings and safety. Should I be scared that they may decide to downsize further and start looking for something else? It's really, oh my God, tough questions, huh? <laughs> tough questions. <laughs> I guess my honest opinion is yes. Unless you have a CEO and that's not even a guarantee, you should always be on the lookout because I don't think that we've ever had anything like this that we're going for right now. Certainly Barclays Bank and a few other banks have said that they, they like the idea of 98% of the workforce working from home. They're going to have four main offices that they're going to have people working in, um, but the rest of the time just have people distanced. So once you've got that and all the things, you think about it from a corporate point of view, the things that I don't do and Ernesto doesn't do, we don't do the schmoozing, we don't play the corporate game, we don't know the politics, we don't do the one-upmanship, the, the bonding, the stuff that happens to be able to move up the corporate ladder. I don't mean it with disrespect, it's just a part of the game that's being played. When you don't have that, you really do become a number and a contributor. And they really will be making decisions on, is that person replaceable by one of these 1,000 people from all around the world who's looking to do the same job for us? And if that's the case, then I think, yes, you should be worried about it. But I also think what you should be doing is making a real position for yourself to be unreplaceable, irreplaceable. You want to be somebody that would say, oh, my goodness, this person's great. And that maybe means doing something beyond your job. It maybe means being using your ability to create content so you're very visible to other banks and other agencies that might want your attention and your contribution because then you become somebody that they want to hold on to because you quite clearly are um, standing above the trenches compared to all your compatriots and people who are in the same uh, office of the same company. So from my point of view, yeah, you should be worried, um, but I don't think that's a challenge. I think it opens it up for you to look at having the same job with many other people. I've got to ask a question, something that Ernesto might want to answer. Why don't people use this opportunity to have lots of side hustles doing the same job anyway? So why don't do it for lots of different people and get paid by everybody? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, Sebastian... Sebastian Song. Where's your answer? Don't just pass it on to me. You answer it. <laughs> well, I was going to answer it. something very similar. So we are we have a limited amount of time on this show. So oh, I right, think it's, I think it's a good idea to go to the next question. So okay. uh, Sebastian Son from uh, Iceland asks, "What's been the biggest lesson for you two over the past two months since lockdown?" Now there you will have a question. You will have you will have a, a different answer from me and from you. But I think the other one that you had before, your answer was very good. So why? I mean. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. No worries. I'll let you take this one so you can go first, and I'll say yes for me as well at the end of this question. <laughs> no, because he's asking for two different. He's asking for two different things. Here he was. It was one question. Okay. So anyway, so Sebastian Son. Uh, from Iceland, uh, what's been the biggest lesson for me? The biggest lesson has been that this world needed to be humbled. 
Uh, the biggest lesson is that we were destroying this planet. The biggest lesson is that uh, COVID-19 might be a blessing in disguise that we are not really understanding. For me, the biggest lesson has been the fact that uh, we needed to listen. We needed to humble. We needed to, to stop doing all the crap and all the bullshit that we have been doing to actually damage completely this planet. And that right now, I have the feeling that the world and humanity are going to take a much better uh, care of themselves. Because you know what? If we actually uh, upset Mother Nature again, COVID is just the beginning and it's not going to be very nice. So either we listen or we are really in trouble. That's for me is the biggest lesson. That's a brilliant answer. How do I follow that? You should really just pass it to the next question. You want. <laughs> wow, no pressure then. So Ernesto knocks it over, out the park, gets a wherever it would be in baseball, and I get up next holding a tiny little baseball bat, just in baseball terms, not in, <laughs> you know. Um, I think it's hard to not say what Ernesto said. I think the biggest the biggest um, lesson for me is how fragile every single thing that people thought was important really is. You've taken away their ability to leave the house. You've taken away their ability to, to connect socially, to meet, to chat, to, to love, to laugh. All those things have been made artificial through your laptop, through your phone, through the internet. The things that you couldn't remove was our ability to get access to food, our ability to order in things that make our lives more enhanced and our need to have people doing the dirty jobs of cleaning, of keeping us safe, of doing the medical stuff. And it really turned on its head how important the, the basics are because we needed them as a bottom line for us to be able to survive versus the shiny things. The, the fashion, the millionaires, the, the the success stories, the look at me, I'm a, you know, Kardashians of this world. And I don't mean it, with, yes, I do mean it with disrespect to the Kardashians, I don't know them, but anyway, but that whole idea of on top of the food chain, there are people who are elite, and we should aspire to be that, while ignoring the guys that are cleaning the streets. That was a massive wake-up call, because without them, I mean, think about it, if we didn't have access to food, access to cleaning, electricity, water, internet, and medical stuff, plus also the armed forces, the police and the, the army and, you know, all the firemen are doing all the job that they do, the whole society would crumble. We literally would be walking around the streets and then you'd be talking about a completely different view of the world. And if it had got to that, I don't think the world could, re could recover. You really would see anarchy and you'd see a hundred years of darkness if people couldn't have access to those basics. So that's what it scared me into thinking about the fragility of the ecosystem and the ability to trust in people who couldn't break it, at least not yet. Yeah, Not as good well, as Ernesto's answer, but I think- That was also a brilliant answer. <laughs> Thank you, Ernesto, you're being very kind. All right, then next up, um, Francis from Troon in Scotland. Oh, Francis, okay, wait, I'm, I'm wait, from Troon wait, in wait. Scotland. Where what? on earth is Troon? Troon I've never is heard of that place, I know pretty much I, I know pretty much Scotland, but I've never heard of Troon. Where is Well, Troon? you're not that travelled, are you, Mr. Travelled Person in the World, <laughs> 237th. Uh, well, most I mean, person. is it really that big, Troon? I've never heard of it. Troon is Royal Troon, where they've got a massive golf course. I think that Trump has done some stuff with there as well. Um, I, I grew up in Troon, and the thing is, because we're on Facebook with this, a lot of my friends from Troon that I grew up with now start watching the show, because when I throw a watch party, they start turning up and seeing it, so it doesn't surprise me that we've got people from Troon. But you should go to Troon, it's very nice. Um, they might even like you. So anyway, let's move on. Um, Francis Will they Troon, understand oh, my English? I don't understand your English, I'm your best friend. Um, so Francis from Trude in Scotland uh, wants to know, and no offense intended, mind you, we would probably oh, fall Wait, out. wait, wait. As soon as somebody starts with no offense intended, yeah. you know that it's going to be bad. It's going to be offensive. <laughs> Straight. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you weren't doing these shows, what would you have spent your time doing instead? Wow. That you I know your answer. I'm going <laughs> Well, Anetta's answer is Podhub. Uh, my answer is I... I would probably be doing very similar to what I'm doing right now. Here's one of the things that happened. Ernesto and I touched base at the very beginning. We, be, we do talk every other day anyway. 
And we decided that we would go for this in an experimental fashion to see how it would grow and see whether we could keep with it or not. And we held each other to it, morally challenging entertainment value and from a point of view of being produ producers and speakers, we just thought, right, let's, let's see how we can do it to grow it at a certain level. If we weren't doing this show, I think we'd be talking every day and we'd be producing something else, maybe our own individual shows. Certainly, I would have created um, some kind of ongoing TV show, whether it was just continuity, whether it was just, you know, a look around my world or something, because I think that this really lends itself to content creators. I think it's a gift for content creators to be able to take this opportunity to do stuff. Because I've never been in a nine to five job, or I haven't been for a very long time in a nine to five job, I'm never one to, th to say, I'm gonna wait for stuff to come to me, told to me by other people. So I've always had to create interesting things to share with people, um, and that's become my job. So I would have been doing something similar like, like this, writing book, podcasting with more people, I think. I think maybe that was what I would have done. I would have created a video podcast series and talked to more people instead of just Ernesto every day. I mean, I love looking at Ernesto's face. I love the way his hair is just growing into an afro. And one day it will become like a proper ice cream, like Mr. Whippy that you can buy <laughs> from the ice cream place. So there we go. That's my answer. Ernesto. We're getting some no, no, no here, offense man. intended. I, yeah, no offense, no offense. Yeah, of course not. Uh, I'm, I'm getting some messages here from Brenda. She says, uh, Brenda McGuire uh, in uh, Iowa, she's, uh, she's saying uh, there will be a talent revolution and companies around the globe will be able to recruit the best talent anywhere in the world. I've been doing it in my own company for 15 years, hiring the best world all the way from uh, best in the world, all the way from Mumbai and Melbourne. That is also very true what she's saying here, very because true. I think What's going to happen is that you should also be started looking uh, globally. And that's one of the great things about uh, what is going on, that many people that were afraid of the Internet are going to start becoming more uh, savvy in how to use tech. Great answer, Brenda. Thank you very much. Um, Tracy Thank Zimmerman you. is telling us employees now require more work and life balance. Exactly, Tracy. As we were mentioning earlier, one of the things which is happening right now is that... Uh, everything is now being combined at home and yes of course they will require uh, uh the, the balance is going to be a lot more difficult to actually get so coming back to the to the uh, answer from uh francis in throne uh what would i be doing well you know from the very beginning actually the very first day i remember i mean we we just were coming back from dubai and um uh well and then afterwards i went to mexico and i saw all the things that were happening and uh we were having our kickoff um uh, webinar for all the speakers that were actually working with us there in dubai and i had to completely change all the the information there and, 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 and what i said is you know what this is a great opportunity because what's going to happen is there's going to be a shake in the industry i wasn't i wasn't aware of what was going to be happening so I knew that it was time to to reset. I, I knew I, I basically mentioned that it was going to be a reset button. Without uh, Dave and myself talking, we said that this was uh, 9/11 2.0, and uh, that's when uh, Dave and I just started talking, and we said, "Well, you know, this is the time to reinvent ourselves." So we didn't really want to go into the webinar route because uh, that's what everybody's doing, and I don't think that the webinars are the the way to do it. Uh, we didn't want to go into the summit route that, uh, well, you know, we're going to have 24 hours of summit or we're going to have 500 guests from summits. Uh, we didn't really want to go into because we knew that everybody th everybody was going to say, well, you know, if we're going to go now online, we're going to have to do online trainings the way that we were doing. So we said, you know what, this is our time to become uh, TV producers. This is our time to become broadcasters. We observed what uh, Trevor Noah was doing. We observed, I mean, we, we got started exactly at the same time. The first person to actually did this was Trevor Noah. Then afterwards, he was um, uh, Stephen Colbert. And then we started, I mean, immediately afterwards. And we started thinking, well, you know, how can we make this into a complete different um, uh, experience for people? And uh, it has been just evolving. I mean, if I see from episode one to episode 44, I think what we have created is just uh, absolutely amazing because, of course, we started thinking differently because, of course, we knew that we had to reinvent ourselves. And I believe very strongly that uh, 
uh, even though that I would have never expected that my name was going to be associated to toilet paper. <laughs> it's actually so something which is very, very, uh, very powerful. I, I feel blessed. Absolutely. Uh, but to be, be honest, Ernesto, we, we didn't copy the big guys in what they were doing. We started the same time as them. Exactly. Based that's on the that's idea. a very good distinction. That's a very good distinction. Well, this is honest truth, guys, and you can check it going back by the dates, and you look at what they were doing and what we were doing at the same time. We decided if they had to go without a studio audience and they're in lockdown, what kind of show would they produce? And we spent a couple of days of brainstorming what we could bring to the table if we were to do a show based on us being at home and us being able to just share ideas. What kind of content? Are we going to sell our stuff? Are we going to invite guests on? Are we just going to talk about whatever's going on with our families? What do people need? What are people going to be scared about? Are we going to run it based on entertainment? Are we going to try, try and train people up to a certain level? Are we going to do what we did before, which is our jobs? That, I mean, you were really in speaker marketing, and my work was in speaker training. And so are we going to reproduce exactly what we did and put that on this show? And we decided from the very beginning that the most effective and the most important thing to do was to say no to every single thing that we felt was an urge from commercial or personal reasons. What we had to do was create what people needed because they were going to be so scared. And we knew that people would be scared because we were scared as well. And we thought if they can turn on to, um, to a show where you've got other people saying, this is what I think we should be doing, then whether they agree with us or not, at least they've got somebody on the same level. What we didn't do is go, I'm all right, ha, 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 look, I've got loads of money, I can survive this anyway, because this has been an incredible leveler. This has been where the rich, famous, um, connected, smart, arty, different nationalities, all ages, everybody can be struck by this virus and everybody has to deal with it the same way. And we didn't know what the deal was when we first started. We didn't even know what lockdown would feel like. So everything we've done has been a progression of that. And everything you see with the big guys doing their shows from lockdown is their progression with their teams doing it. Yeah. And I think what we've created is something that is on a par with those guys from the point of view of where we all started off together. Yeah, sure, they're seasoned stand-up comics and they're used to doing, you know, maybe gags that we've watched and studied and so on. But what we've done is we've created content on a regular basis that unites people and helps people to think about their business and where it needs to be. And we've never dropped the ball on that. So I think that we would have created something like this anyway, regardless. But I think the journey that we've taken, um, I wouldn't replace it with any other idea because I think this is the right one for us. Yeah, absolutely. This is the right one for us. And I think it's also... Uh, for me, it feels right. I mean, I, I have to say, sometimes it has been very tiring. Sometimes it has been exhausting actually doing the research and getting all the stuff to get the shows done. But I mean, the, the sense of satisfaction that we get after we finish each and every show, it's just incredible. I mean, right now we're building for uh, episode 50, which is going to be great. So make sure to watch episode 50 because we are going to really make a, a big, big uh, uh, event for that. So anyway, let's just continue because we're running out of time. Henry from Ottawa, Canada, he's saying, uh, I know that petrol has never been so cheap, but I really don't feel like going into my car anywhere anymore. It's weird. I can get everything I need from inside my house or call it in. Am I wrong to feel like this? <laughs> oh, my wow. God, these questions. I just... <laughs> it's, you know what, I think, Henry, I think you're absolutely right to feel like this. And what we used to say was it would be a lazy person that did it. We didn't realize it was a safe person that would stay at home like a couch potato and make those kind of decisions. Um, we are actually fueling industries by doing this now, which sounds like a weird thing. You know, us not moving and us not going out um, keeps the medical um organizations with numbers they can cope with it keeps people in delivery and, and manufacturing in jobs um and it it just seems to work i don't think you should feel bad about that um i have been out of my car and it really feels like the the bit in before we when we watch a movie like mad max where there's an apocalypse and there's a bit in black and white where they said and this happened 
and you see riots and pandemics and stuff going on until you end up with a handful of people walking down the street and everywhere else is deserted. The streets are like that. It feels kind of weird. I know that over the next couple of weeks, we'll see them getting busy as people start getting back into work again. We might see it going back to this again. Um, but I think you have to go out for your own mental happiness when you feel comfortable doing it. Because even now, talking to people, you do it from a distance. You know, you do. I mean, I've found people not smiling. People may be waving. And when they do wave, it's followed by a big smile. But you really have to bring it out of people because they just feel, if I wave at you, you're going to come over to me. And then I've got a confrontation because I don't know if I want to risk everything to talk to a stranger. And those are real subconscious things that people are thinking right now. So as soon as we feel that there's a, um, a remedy to this and a vaccine, happy days, everyone's going to go out to play. It's not going to be for quite some time yet. So I feel exactly where you're coming from. And it's down to your own judgment and your own job and your own family life as to when you d actually decide to break it yourself. Yeah, that's great. We're getting a nice comment from Frank saying, I want to personally thank the two of you for your devotion to help others in the pursuit and success post COVID-19. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. And also thank you for being one of our loyal watchers. So I think really uh, we appreciate also that you can, are there. Can I make this? Can I make a statement there? And I want to change a term that you, you use and I use too much. I don't want to say viewers. I don't say followers. I want to just say friends. From now on, anybody who watches the show is one of our friends, period. Whatever their contribution, they're friends. I absolutely love that comment, uh, Dave. I completely agree with that. And uh, Henry, I hope that Dave gave you a good answer. You want also my answer? <laughs> Obviously. Mr. Ernesto. Da -da 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 -da. Go on. Da, 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 da. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, um, I don't think that you have to feel guilty about it. I mean, right now, the uh, the economic repercussion uh, of uh, the the drop in the oil price it's something that it's going to be part of the domino effect, and that's just inevitable. And uh, but also, on the other hand, the the uh, incredible opportunity that we're giving the 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 uh, planet to breathe and to change it's good so i mean of course there's good things and there's bad things but i absolutely don't think that you have to feel bad about fe feeling like that let's just take one last question and then i think right. we have to go so um paul hear? from brazil okay paul from brazil uh, is asking all right, I'll, I'll read it out because I don't get to read them because that's, that's your thing because you're taller than me. Um, Paul from Brazil asks, do politicians owe us a lot more empathy and responsibility? I love the show. I know you say you avoid politics, but I want to know if you're in charge of a country, what would you do so differently? <laughs> right. Wow. Wait, wait, before we this. <laughs> Why? I mean, if we always say, no, you know, let's stay away from politics. Everybody tells you, I know that you stay away from politics, but... It's just like, oh. I know, I know, I know, I know. Can we pretend we come from a neutral place on the internet, a neutral country, and then answer the question without pointing fingers? So what was the question again? Question is, do you think that politicians owe us a lot more empathy and responsibility um, because of the fact that so much has been made about making money and getting out of the, the lockdown? Okay, here's my here's my answer. We need more women head of states. That's my six-word answer. <laughs> I'm trying to count it now. We need more women head of state. That's seven. Okay, so, so moving on. Um, but that's a great six-word answer, plus a bonus if you want it. Um, I would agree with that. I think that not all politicians are tired of the same brush. Can I just explain one thing? When we're saying about it, because I, I put this on LinkedIn, and I had a lot of people saying, it's not true about women, it's not true about men, you just need empathy. What I'm saying is per head of country, if you look at all the people who are female and all the ones that are male, more of the ones that are female have got the right Wi-Fi code for looking after their country than the ones that are male. I'm not saying men can't do it because many of them done an incredible and really wonderful job. But the ones that are complete loons are what we're talking about. I, I am aware that one particular politician, and Paul knows exactly which one I'm talking about, the answer to what are you doing about the 5,000 people that have died was so what? That's what was said on live TV from the, 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 the pr uh, president. So I, am, I think that politicians... 
it's really shown that politicians need to really get the Wi-Fi code of their people right. And it's different. Some people are believing the money is more important. Some people are believing that the people are more important. What we've normally had is a world war. So the Third World War is long overdue. I'm not saying I want to start it, but that, for the last 100 years or so, has been a way of culling down the amount of people living on the planet, of culling the resources, getting politicians to rethink, getting people to come together, and so on. We've not had that. We might have had economic world wars, but we've not had a physical battle because none of us hate each other enough, which is a very good thing. So you're going to end up with a, a load of really strange stuff. Now, my big, my big um, viewing point from my own personal point of view, my own, my own relationship with the world, is who gets voted in again who hasn't shown empathy to their country. That's what I want to see. Because if you have been really mercenary and you haven't shown that you care about your country and you do get voted back in again, what does that say about the amount of time that we spend caring about people? Yeah. Well, let me just tell you, I mean, just as a, as a backup to what I was uh, saying about women, when I was working for KLM, uh, one day, the, um, the, she was a co-pilot, actually. She was not a pilot. She was not the, the pilot in command of a 747 that was flying from Seoul, South Korea to Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, there was an eruption on the, um, one of the volcanoes there, and the four engines of the 747 at uh, 39,000 feet uh, just shut down. And uh, this, uh, this woman, uh, basically, I mean, she had never really taken any, any trainings on how to glide a 747, uh, which, of course, gliding a 747, it's a very, very difficult thing to, uh, very, very difficult thing to do. The pilot in command freaked out. The one that landed the plane safely, safely was the woman. So, I mean, regardless of whatever it is, whatever it is, if we will have more women, in uh, in positions of power, believe me, we will be a lot better. And I have the feeling, and this is one of my predictions, is that after COVID, there is going to be a lot more women in power. That's what that's what my things that's my thoughts are. And I am super super supportive of any woman which actually uh, runs for office anywhere. <laughs> I'll tell you why I think that might be a truth, and I'm not convinced it's going to be a truth because it's still going to be a a lot of the same world that we had before. But I think that a metric that people are going to be measured on will be their empathy, their emotional intelligence, and their ability to use that for leadership. And I think those are the skill sets that you're talking about. The ability to nurture comes more naturally to a mother than it does to a guy. A guy has different skill sets, very valid skill sets, but different ones. And so if the world is moving towards that particular direction, then I think you're going to find there is truth in that. But I would love to see a more neutral view of uh, of people's skill sets, as in it's not whether you're male or female, it's whether you can actually do things for other people. I think that's a better way. Um, and I see we're being joined by a dog. So on that bombshell, <laughs> thank you very much. A dog is looking at my face. That dog's <laughs> staring at me. That dog's causing a fight. It's looking at me going, you know what, Dave? I don't care what corner. All right, doggy, is this what you want? You want a piece of me? Is this what you want? Come on. Come on, doggy. So there you go. I just thought I'd share that wonderful idea. And clearly... Let me, let me just, say the, the, <laughs> let me just share the, 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 uh, this video. This is, what, this is just the only video that I want to share today. Uh, just uh, I hope that you can listen to it. It's very funny. Have a look. <coughs> <laughs> on that note... Stay safe and see you tomorrow. Dave, once again, great pleasure doing a Disruptors Clinic with you. <laughs> Thank you. Back to happy hour. Stay safe. See you tomorrow with Toilet Paper Diaries. Goodbye. Bye-bye. You just call.